chapter twenty four of the forbidden way by george gibbs this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by tony oliva gretchen decides lawrence berkeley was doing scout duty in the neighborhood of the seat of war keeping closely in touch with ray by wire code although he had a room at the brown palace hotel he went elsewhere for his meals and since the arrival of general bent's party he had eluded the detection of cornelius bent curtis janey or cortland he had been advised by a brief wire from gretchen janey of the date of her departure from new york and had noted the arrival of his business enemies with mingled feelings in response to his note to her room gretchen had stolen away and met him quietly in one of the hotel parlors where unknown to curtis janey they had renewed their vows of eternal fidelity gretchen was of course familiar with larry's position as a business rival of her father's pet company and she had thought it best since larry's departure from new york to keep their engagement a secret from her parents she had heard from him regularly and distance it seemed had made no difference in the nature of her feelings for him but she knew from her father's disappointment at cortland bent's defection that the time to take her parents into her confidence had not yet arrived it had not occurred to curtis janey to think of lawrence berkeley's attention seriously but gretchen knew that her mother at least had breathed a sigh of relief when larry had left new york mrs janey had questioned her daughter anxiously but gretchen had answered in riddles and in the end had succeeded in convincing her that marriage was the last thing in the world she was thinking of gretchen was a little afraid of her father once or twice he had expressed himself rather freely as to the kind of man he expected his daughter to marry from which it was clear that his list of eligibles did not include lawrence berkeley she had written all of this tearfully to larry so that when she reached denver he decided that matters had reached a crisis which demanded some sort of an understanding with janey pear the clandestine meetings which rather appealed to gretchen's sense of the romantic made larry unhappy he had nothing to be ashamed of and saw no reason why he had to court the woman he loved under cover of darkness so he made up his mind to settle the thing in his own way in this crisis it had occurred to gretchen to enlist mrs cheyne's services on their behalf for rita had always been a favorite of her father's but an evening or two after her arrival in denver that lady had mysteriously disappeared from the hotel only leaving word that she had gone to visit friends in the neighborhood and would advise general bent of her future plans no one but larry with whom she had been talking had for a moment suspected that the friends in the neighborhood were only jeff and though she had not bound larry to secrecy both duty and discretion demanded his silence larry's position was difficult but when he discovered that nothing was to be gained by keeping his movements hidden from cornelius bent he took the bull by the horns and boldly sent up his card to curtis janey's suite he was so full of his own affairs that mr janey's possible misconception of the object of his visit had not occurred to him he was welcomed cordially so jovially in fact that for a moment he was taken off his guard well berkeley by george glad to see you rather a surprise to find us all out here invading your own country eh larry sat rather soberly refused a cigar and expressed well-bred surprise 
i can't imagine anybody wanting to leave Brabank in april he said well i didn't want to berkeley i'm doing a little scientific farming this summer but we had to come out on this smelter business the general and i he stopped and puffed rapidly at his cigar it's too bad really i'm sorry sorry but i think ray made a mistake i like ray berkeley he's got stuff in him but he overleaped himself in this smelter business it's a pity he thought he had to fight us but you've got to admit we gave him every chance i didn't come to see you about the smelter business mr Janey," said berkeley rather quietly but on a matter of my own a personal a private matter Janey's face grew grave a private matter yes sir larry closed his lips firmly for a moment and then came to the point without further words mr Janey, i suppose i should have spoken to you before i left new york our business relations seem to make it difficult but the very fact that we can't be friends in business makes it necessary for me at least to be honest with you in this other matter what on earth are you driving at i want to marry your daughter sir that's all said larry with the suddenness of desperation gretchen my daughter Janey said explosively he rose with one hand on the back of his chair and glared at larry as though he doubted his sanity you want to marry gretchen then he laughed and larry discovered in that laugh wherein Janey and general bent had points of contact Janey took three long strides to the window then wheeled suddenly you must be crazy my daughter mary you larry had risen and met Janey's impertinent scrutiny with some dignity yes sir i'm not aware of anything in my family my connections my prospects or my character which can be found objectionable your daughter cares for me why you insolent young fortune hunter wait a moment and larry's voice dominated you'll speak to me as one gentleman does to another or you'll not speak to me at all he took up his hat from the table and then more evenly i take it you refuse your consent by this time curtis Janey's usual poise had completely deserted him refuse my consent well rather he went to the door through which berkeley had entered but instead of opening the door Janey turned and put his back to it see here young man you don't like my language perhaps you'll like it less when i'm through talking colorado seems to breed big ambitions i know nothing of your family and care less but i do know something of your prospects inside of forty-eight hours you won't have prospects of any kind you're going to be blotted out do you understand i've made other plans for my daughter and i'm not in the mood to listen to any silly romantic nonsense from her or any far-sighted propositions from you your proposal is impudent sir d blank d impudent the proposition of a desperate man who failing to win by fair means will you open the door sir said larry now white with rage if not i'll find means to open it myself he took a step forward and the two men glared into each other's eyes not a pace apart there was no mistaking larry's determination and mr Janey's surprise was manifest this was not the manner of the fortune hunters he had met somewhat uncertainly he stood aside and berkeley put his hand on the doorknob i did you an honor in consulting you sir it's a pity you couldn't appreciate it in the future i'll act on my own initiative good afternoon and before the older man had even realized what the words meant larry had opened the door and was gone he hurried down the corridor still trembling at the meaning of Janey's insults which had touched his southern pride for gretchen's sake it would have been better if he could have kept himself under control and he realized that he had lost every chance of getting curtis Janey's permission and approval 
but that did not daunt him he had acquitted his mind of a responsibility and he was glad that in the future there could be no misunderstanding if he could not marry gretchen with the approval of her family he would marry her without it halfway up the block above the hotel on seventeenth street larry stopped able for the first time to review more calmly the incidents of the last half hour what was it curtis janney had said about his prospects in forty-eight hours he would be wiped off the earth that meant jeff too he had a sudden guilty sense of shock that in his selfish absorption in his own affairs he had for the moment forgotten jeff and the business of the company forty-eight hours that was important information and janey had let it slip in anger there was no doubt about that what did it mean that all the amalgamated company's wires were laid and the only thing left was to touch the button which would blow the ray interests to pieces it looked that way and yet larry still hoped the rails of the sawatch short line would be joined to those of the d and c to-morrow much depended on simmons larry hurried over to the offices of the denver and california and emerged later with a look of satisfaction simmons was still general manager and was still loyal within thirty-six hours at his orders a locomotive and one passenger car from the d and c yards at pueblo would carry clinton simmons mulrennan judge weigel and other stockholders of the development company from pueblo over the line to sawatch establishing their connection at pueblo in accordance with jeff's agreements with the road it would take some queer construction of the law for jeff's enemies to get around that larry knew that it meant a long fight one which lack of money might lose in the end but he assured himself that he could establish a nice legal point which would be worth fighting for the calling of jeff's loans by the banks was a more dangerous matter larry had hoped that this could have been arranged but only a small amount of the money had been forthcoming and where jeff was going to raise the rest of it providence only knew when larry reached his room at the hotel he found a brief note from gretchen i have heard about everything i shall never speak to father again you must marry me at once larry i can't stand the suspense any longer mother is here with me but i'm going to get away somehow meet me at the shirley at ten o'clock larry smiled and kissed the penciled scrawl rapturously god bless you i'll do it gretchen dear he said to himself that was a busy evening for larry it was six o'clock when he wrote a line to gretchen and rang for a page to whom he gave careful instructions also some money then he sat at his desk and with his code sent a long wire to jeff at half-past six he was dressing carefully in the intervals between packing a suitcase and phoning to a legal friend of his dick wetherall about a minister and a license at seven thirty he dined with wetherall at eight he received rita cheyne's mysterious wire at nine he found the cashier of the tenth national bank at his home and planned for the taking up of the development company's notes and arranging to deposit mrs cheyne's money to jeff ray's account on the following morning at ten he met gretchen at the shirley hotel and at half-past ten had married her in response to larry's first telegram and speeding eastward on the early train jeff ray read all this astonishing news in the sheaf of telegrams handed him at the station by ike matthews his brow lifted and the hard lines at his mouth relaxed in a smile good old larry he tried to conjure a vision of curtis janney's face as he heard the news larry was carrying the war into the enemy's camp with a vengeance it took jeff longer to decipher the second telegram 
mrs cheyne has arranged with her denver agents deposit eight hundred thousand dollars your credit tenth national to-morrow morning await instructions it seemed incredible when had rita done this the grim lines that his long night's vigil had seared at the corners of his mouth grew deeper but his eyes glowed with a sombre fire there was still an even chance to win for larry was holding the fort awaiting reinforcements and rita cheyne had restored the break in jeff's line of communication the astonishing information in larry's last wire seemed to clear his mind of the doubts which had assailed it all night long the possibility of success now gave his own affairs a different complexion he could never have told the truth to general bent jeff couldn't think of him as a father unless he won the fight for the independence of the sawatch smelter jeff was no man to come cringing in the hour of failure at the feet of his enemy asking immunity on the strength of such a relationship as that which existed between them it had been clear to jeff all night long that if he lost his fight he could never face general bent with the truth that was the real bitterness of defeat but if he won the long years of dishonor through which he had struggled without a name without kindred without friends loomed large before him mute merciless years of struggle privation and emptiness if he won there was more than one victory to be gained in this fight a moral victory as well as a physical one the triumph of an eternal truth the vindication of a forgotten wrong if he won he would tell general bent the truth not as a son to a father but as one merciless enemy to another asking no quarter and giving none the only connection for kenny at sawatch was with the later train but jeff had arranged for a motor-car which took him over the pass and landed him at kinney in time for the twelve o'clock train for denver where he arrived at six o'clock that evening larry met him at the station smiling broadly i think we've put a spoke in their wheel jeff he laughed but we must keep dark to-morrow morning when the banks open you're going to take up that stock then we're going to call on the general is everything all right yes simmons is standing pat but they don't know it the new general manager comes in to-morrow but simmons orders will go through first that train will run jeff sure poor old larry a fine honeymoon you're having where's your wife at the weatherall ranch went out there last night her mother's been out to see her it looks as though they might come around it's too bad i had to go against them just now but mr janey forced my hand and i had to you understand don't you jeff and explaining as they went berkeley followed jeff out of the station into a motor car that was awaiting them End of chapter twenty four